Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Sanatos Plays The Banner Saga. When we last left off, oh look it's a giant, it's a godstone of a vial. Oh shoot, I forgot that we were starving to death. Um, yeah, there aren't a lot of us. We're not very happy. And I can't wait, because if I click wait, people will drop dead. <laughs> okay, the, the imposing godstone of Bajorf approaches. His severe visage makes it feel like he's watching you, even now. The caravan spreads out, happy to be free of the confining forest and in open fields. In the honor of Bajorf, some of the caravan crack kegs of mead and wine before anyone can stop them. To the only god that matters, they shout. Everyone drinks in your glad for the merriment that swept over the caravan. And then you question the logic, saying if we're starving and we have no food and people are dropping dead as we walk. Where did you get this beer? There's no time to wait. Let's go, guys. You're openly mocked for suggesting that everyone get ready to walk some more. Still, it's not long before they've had their fun and you're back on the road. The caravan seems in a great mood despite everything that has happened. That's because they don't realize that we're gonna all be dead long before the dreads can kill us. Eight dead today? Hey, look, there's a spot. You notice some of the are pacing while others sleep. The brief conversation with each other and other clansmen grow shorter and louder. Go away! roars one vard at a young girl, asked him too many questions. Other clansmen stop and stare. I'm impressed they've kept it together this long. The vard's embarrassment slowly morphs into irritation. We endure many pains, he says, sneering at the gawking crowd. I was trying to compliment him, I guess he didn't take it that way. As he stalks off, the crowd murmurs common insults about the giants. And we're dead. Rainvik is more of a <laughs> smattering of farmhouses than a proper town. Though judging by stray dredge stalking through empty fields, it is barely even that anymore. Please tell me I can fight dredge. I need renown. Oh no. Rainvik comes and goes as the long series of farmhouses abandoned crawling with dredge. The farmers have probably already fled the boys guard. You try to hurry past but eventually spot it. Dredge the emblem in your direction. What is that? Points out Oddleaf, up near one of the longhouses. In the distance, a large person, clothes seemingly covered in blood, is cursing loudly and stumbling about. He staggers into the longhouse, laughing. The dreads heading your way turn back, roaring and being pounding on the longhouse door. They seem to be holding a grudge against this particular person. You doubt the door will hold for long. Now, I'm not about heroics, but I am not above, but I am not happy to starve to death, and I need renown or I can't eat. Against my better judgment, we should do something, you say? After all, Rook's number one focus is food. They disagree even though it means putting them all at risk. No more than walking away does. We need money. As they quietly approach, the dredge of men has been to the door and break through. Hey! Shouts the fire wearing all red, standing on the other side of the dredge. Come all the way up here just for me? He seems unconcerned about the dredge as he hoists his enormous sword. Hey, sick boy. Where's your sword? That's two move. Mine's one aggro. That's awesome. Um, what am I might be wearing? Plus three will up a kill. No, give him that. Plus two move, negative one aggro. Actually, no. Yeah. He's not very good at short shadowing, though. Sorry, sick one. I don't. Um. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah, 15. Yeah, 14. Both of you won't need more. One who doesn't is Rook. Each of definitely needs more experience. Both Odd Leaf and. Look, I maxed on experience, but I'll leave carries the team. Why is it Ivan up there? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, um... Was I using Morgan? I think I was gonna start using Morgan. Right? Okay, so this is your maxed state. That's kinda cool. Though, you shouldn't be that high if you've killed nobody. That's... cheating. Okay. Um... Oh, right. I was just reading about this. I want him in front. You're second. Both of my shield breakers should be in front. And then my damage dealers should be next. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Alright guys. Oh. Right. Um. Plus two strength. Plus three will per kill. Alright. Strength, yes. I, you need strength. You need strength, I'll leave. Let's do strength. Let's do strength resistance plus two aggro. 
I should be giving some with high defense. That would be Ivo, right? Let's move minus when I go. That's too sensitive. Oh, I can't give it to him because he's not level 5. But you both only have 10, to, 10 uh, armor. Oh well. Give it to him. Now, now, now everybody's good. Okay. Alright, guys. Let's do this battle. Give me food or give me death. Because I already have death and I want food. You my shield basher. But it just so happens the guy closest to me shouldn't have a shield bastard. He needs to be attacked normally. There. Well, I forgot they could do that. <laughs> He's already freaking out. Okay. Move. There. But first was a bad idea. Fire! Now you, I'm pretty sure, are really bad at breaking shots. Are you going to do two? Um... But I'm pretty sure you can't hurt me. Let's go! Oh, I'm not gonna like you. No, not the- Ow. Okay. Ooh, do it. Ha! <laughs> Ow. Okay. Who here has... Who can you hurt? You can hurt him. But I can't hit anybody from where I'm standing, so... I can only do 11 damage. But I can't hurt him. I actually can hurt him one. I can hit him for. Let's go. I know it's scary, dude. Now, can you? I think you can. Eat you. Kill the scary giant. Go. Ha ha ha. Shield shadow. There. Go there. Right, attack him. What do you defense? Ah. Hey. Do you resist him? You should attack him. There we go. Gary dude wants to beat on Rook. Take away his shield. Okay, who's next? I'd leave. Shoot him. For three. I'd leave, well, hang on. Uh, look down. Oh dear. Ouch. Actually. I don't even want to sense any threat to us right now. It's that guy. I'll leave. Wait. Okay. You go there. Take down that one. You can kill this one. Do it. And now we just beefed super strong one if I'm unless I'm wrong. Come and get me. If you dare. He doesn't dare. Alright. You should go there. And turn. You can kill him in one hit. Take him down. Wait. 
perfect. Now, go. Excuse me, let me do this. Six attack. Oddly, back up. Pick his defense down. I can do... Five, I think. Four. Alright. All these moves actually probably one of the most useful possibilities in the game. Cause I know they'll come after her, so if I just... Ooh, Eco's strong. Look and Sigborn have both been injured, but I don't really care about Sigborn because she can't use willpower. Yay, food money. Too bad there's nobody to... Welcome to my meat house, Sigborn's house of meat. Wasn't expecting a bar of uh, this part south or this drunk. I can see that. There are people huddled in the corners of the meat hall, looking at him's uneasiness. Who are all these? Who are you people? No, no, they're friends. They made this place. It's not really mine. You little dredge back to a room full of unarmed people. What is wrong with you? Come on, I saved everyone in here. They shared some fine drink. The best drink. Wait, I was saving your butt. Remember that part? If you knew you'd come up here, you could have told me. What do we do with this guy? How many meat is left? The time to show you a huge stack of barrels filled with quality meat and help you harden back to the caravan. Yes! Sigborn, I'll miss this place. Good memories. You coming with us, Sigborn? Well, hi. I didn't invite you. We're not starving to death anymore. With some help, you gather up the cast of meat and head back to the caravan. Sigborn and the other so survivors in tow. The caravan gives the boisterous warrior a large berth as you set up a boys guard. Just one time and the boost is all the way up. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Alright, I should not have eaten that much, but at least we'll be happy as we die now. Ugh, what did I do? Said Boy was in the pool of his own sick. Why am I surrounded by small people? You look Samson let him sleep off his drunken soup on the ground, and this morning he's paying the price. Um, <clears throat> help him recover. You look near your clansmen offer any food and drink that can scrum together for the morning bottle. When you're on the offer of meat, he pushes it away. In fact, take this with take this away from me, he says, and you with massive meat stain. Ooh. Eventually Sigborn comes to you. I I won't get into details, he says. I'm supposed to bring those cats from Ravens that stick back to Boys Guard. I think maybe half, by accident. Point is, Sigborn continues. You don't tell anybody what happened, I won't tell anyone about the meat you got, okay? Trust me on this one. You agree and get back to travel. Ooh, I got an item. People, please stop dying. A pair of stout. Okay, shout, shout. Some giant hall, but it's empty. You approach the structure, but it's not none of the markings. The walls seem unsteady at best. Finally, sleeping beneath a group, you over here. The family begin unpacking. If there's a fight, I want it, because I give him food. Whoever left here may have be had good reason to the caravan, but after a few trying hours of searching for clues, you have no answers. The frustration and the wasted time is apparent on the clansman's face. We'll sleep here. Shows up as people flood into the building. A violin leans against a supporting pillar. It crushes, it cracks, and begins and brings down a portion of the massive group, crushing a number of plants and beneath it. Sadly, the rubble is too deep to recover their bodies, and you leave the building behind with regret. Uh, This is a suicidal march. We just keep marching along, because we have nowhere else to go. But we have no food. Oh, a woman's stiff or screams failed to overly concern anyone. It was only a matter of time before the expectant mother gave birth. If Caravan is simply excited by this first sign of new life since the trip began. It's incredibly privately. You discreetly make your way to the family's tent amid cheerful clansmen. You give your most heartfelt congratulations to the parents, telling them how strong the young boy looks. The mother cries and the father thanks you repeatedly. Ooh. As we pass steep cliffs, the sprawl of Boersgard comes into view. A city of contrasting rich and poor, opportunity and gamble. Our best hope for salvation, or our graves. Chapter 7, The Slayer and the Slain. So I'm guessing our graves. Finally, you arrive at Boys Guard, where the walls stretch for miles in both directions and are littered with the bodies of dreads violent men. Excuse the mess, shouts the voice from above the gate. Looking up, despite a striking fire, his face wreathed with matted black hair. Moving that the gate catches your eye. Dredge is still banging on the gate doors without luck. 
Let us in, you shout. Doug Boyne pushes past. I won't be hearing the end of this for a while, he says before yelling up. Open up, boy, Rick, they dug me out of Raven Neck. You hear a laugh echoing on the wind as the door creaks. A dozen armed men, led by a massive bar, make quick work of the dread and usher you into the city. Imagine if we- I am so glad I didn't leave him behind. I am so glad I didn't leave him behind. You may be interested to know they brought a mender. You didn't go to get a mender. Where's the mead? Big Born shrugs apologetically. I guess the mender will do. Either we've got a chance now or we're completely screwed. Ah, um, look, we've come a long ways. Some is probably Skoker. Are you in charge here? In charge of the governor, I suppose. Listen, if you have something to tell him, say it now. Otherwise, you're on your own. I don't care where you go, but stirring up trouble is probably the only reason you'll see me again. It won't be the talk. Mendel, come along. We're going to go see the governor. Barbara can still join Lee with Ivan, who goes willingly, signaling that he's fine. Fane, this is just like Forrest Rick all over again. This is nothing like Frost Brother. The one in the basement is probably the new Ravens. Ravens? Is that good or bad? Depends on who they're working for. Hopefully it really is the governor and not someone trying to strong arm their way into his seat. I guess we wait for Ivan to tell us if he comes back. I'm not worried about Ivan. I'm worried about the army of refugees we brought who don't belong here. Probably right. Nobody other than a single nice thing about Boy's Guard. So what now? We gotta go to the docks to see where our options are in case we need to leave quickly. Did you notice the city guards when we came in? Uh, what guards? I have seen the Ravens are all they've got left. Something serious went down, and when Bellower gets here, he's going to walk right through this place without even breaking a stride. Uh, let's leave that to ourselves for now, so the docks. I. Need. Food. You gotta be kidding me. Uh. I did this very badly. This is so not worth it. To buy anything here. This is so not worth it. To buy anything here. Beer. Knock back when things are bigger than three. Thanks, plus one. Plus two strings. I wish I could sell these things for food. Uh, Ivan's not with us. What's he talking about? Morgan. Okay. Come over, look, Ivan, I'll leave each other and Morgan. This is our team. You. Yes. Go. There. That was probably a terrible idea. I can't rest. Go to the docks. When you get to the docks, your heart sinks. Not a long ship to be seen aside from racks. Bodies float in the river. Buildings are trashed and boiled up. What happened here? Murmurs Let. They're all gone, says I, when approaching alone. I see you had the same thoughts as me. Ivan, you're okay. I'm fine. It wasn't a lie. Governor is here. He's in hiding. Why? Since the dread started appearing, anyone with a ship and half of it left long ago. People can't leave by foot. Food is scarce. The marks are bare. Poor Scott is a fire cake waiting for someone to tip it over. So the governor is paying the ravens to protect him against his own people? And keep the peace, so to speak. It's more like a massacre any time there's a hint of up uprising. Uh, where does that leave us? I promise him to mend his protection in our brain. I don't think he's very popular there. They're going to start tearing this place down and build new ships. We can ride to the Oldsmore River all the way to the capital. Leaving another perfectly good city behind, how long will it take to build new ships? Hold on, what's going to happen to the people living in Borsgard? It's the best I could do with that. You thought it could take as long as a month. You don't usually make ships out of scrap lumber. As soon as people figure out what's going on, there's going to be guys in the street. A month? Why bother? Bellower will be here within a week, if not sooner. I'm open to suggestions. Got to be done. There's no end to this. I have a rose in frustration, leaving you standing by the docks. I like gives you a worried look before chasing after them. Ivan. What do we do about Bellower? Ivan says nothing for a moment. I don't know. We're starving. We don't have time to wait a month. We have to get somewhere. You find Ivan standing on the city walls, overlooking the fields alone. Dreads are keeping the distance, but continue to gather. I'm okay, Rook. Ivor cuts you off before you say anything. You know he's been through. You know he's been through worse. Just feels like someone should cu cut us a break every now and then. If we want to be standing a month from now, we're going to have to be prepared. What did you uh? What did you have in mind? First off, our clans may need a place to stay. They'll get torn to th threads out in the streets. I'll keep nine of the up here. If they break through the walls, we're done for. So we'll have to keep them back. But I'll just handle that. We need to know who's controlling what and make sure we get our cut. Food's going to become scarce, and when they start building these ships, we're going to have to keep people away. What a darn mess, I'll do what I can. 
I will explain. I'm leading attacks with Ivan every time the dreads look too close to the gates. Listen, we're going to lose Fred's Empire every day like this. I don't need to tell you what happens if nobody's men in the war. We could use the help. You consider what you will do now, knowing that any of these tasks would t likely take a full day. <sighs> this one, my source of supplies. I checked around Adi Terrace and nobody has food and they won't part with it for a fair price and their medicine has been gone for days. They're either guarding the place or just plain gone. It doesn't say it, but, this, but you can tell this is going to be a serious problem. We don't have any food. Get on the places and holding out. You join our leaves with the biggest meat horns, determined to make some sort of deal. You can tell a few of them have food to spare, but the ample number of bodyguards hanging around make it clear they don't want to share. You can tell our leaves is about to snap. Resolve yourself to a fight. Hand over the mo- hand it over. As you motion to pull your weapon, our leaves says your hand. You instead begrudgingly leave and she says, Even if I thought that just the two of us could take them and run off with a couple of supplies, I have a feeling more people than just us would suffer for it. You figure she's probably right. Dude. We are going to die. I will point out the dreads along the wall. There's a lot more of them and they're getting brave, he says. We lost a friend number of fire since yesterday. We could use your help if there's nobody left to defend the walls. Look, says Aunt Leaf approaching. Someone handed me a note this morning. She shows you a slip of paper marking a back street. Probably from one of those places we visited yesterday. Maybe some misplaced embers too, though. Can't imagine what they think we have. If you want to go check, let me know. <sighs> we need food. You travel to the deserted back street and the man soon approaches, confident in his step. You came looking for quite a lot of food, he says. I can give it to you. I want something too. Let's trade. Adi gives him a suspicious look. We don't want to complicate this. He continues, boy God has a lot of people there and we don't all get along. You're not from here. So when you get something that was stolen from me, nobody will come knocking. Do you understand? What do you want? It's not what you think, he says. Just a drinking horn. My great grandfather. It was stolen. This is worth... How much food do you says Adi? The man laughs. As much as you're willing to carry. Okay, we'll do it. I'm desperate. Good, he replies. Then we both win. He marks an area on your map down near the water and scribbles low time next to it. So you doubt that's the real name. What is this alert says as you approach the walls this morning? A loud pounding in the emanation where Ivor stands, looking out on the dreads. We got problems, York, shouts Ivor. Nothing but wounded and dirty fighters left and the dreads know it. Ivor's clothes are soaked in blood and he looks haggard. You hear a loud crack from behind. They're coming, says Ivan. He brings lightning down in the crowd of dreads, but they regroup relentlessly. The great shudder and crack. What do we do? shouts Alette. Uh, try to stop him at the gate. The gates buckle before you can reach them. Kumu is always standing there with his wet warhammer ready. Come on, he shouts as they pour forth. He takes down, he takes down three huge stone guards before they pile onto him and he falls to the ground. Others will have to deal with the dreads who are now spreading to the city. Unless the flow is stopped, you'll be overwhelmed. You drive the dreads back, but the gates are too bad to close properly. Suddenly, you find yourself face to face with an army. They just say kill. Man. Huh. <sighs> Can't keep anybody alive. At all. They just took down my... I am really bad at this game. Okay. Let's go. But with Kuma gone, I'm in for a load of trouble. Hey, look. How far can you shoot? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And he needs to go four, three. Move there. Attack him. With six damage. Fire. Go there. Attack him. With six damage. Go there. Move up. I do believe we're gonna die. I do believe I'm going to lose. I do believe there's nothing I can do about it. Hold him in place. We can't worry about him right now. Okay. He can take this one down. 
You can take that one down. What's that, what's that 18? He's up there. Attack. No. Undo. Flare on. This one. Go. Oh dear. Alright, Alec, move forward. Attack him. Four. Four armor. Look. Shoot him. She's almost out. Alright. 17. You do 10 attack damage. Biggest threat is you. Attack him. 4. 3 damage. There. Now he's not a threat. Shoot him. Can't shoot him. Pop them. And he's... Oh no. Okay. Go, go there. Kill him. Come on. I'd leave. Move there. Dumb down. One more time. Thirteen. You can kill this one. Okay. Right. Yes, you can. Good. Good job, you kill. I am so glad I didn't kill you. Hurt him. You have one attack, and you're going to fall each other. But you might as well make it easier on all of us before you do. What are you doing? Oh no. Kill him. Ho! Oh. Finish him off. Hoo -hoo. Whoa. Morgan has been injured in battle. Oh my. That was that was not good. That was very, very not good. Only two left standing were those two. Some of you managed to defeat the dreads long enough for the ravens to enforce the battle gates. You slip back into the town, leaving a fresh pile of courses outside the walls. Hopefully they'll think twice before the next assault.
Fortunately, you want them up the dirt to wander in the streets. A friend of a clansman died trying to protect themselves before you can kill the last boot. Um, Dude, there's no one left. There is literally no one left. They're just disappearing by hundreds, this cipher, but they haven't approached the gates since we drove them back. They're waiting for some siphon or someone. Dad, there's a ride at the docks! A light runs up to you out of breath. They're trying to smash up the boats! When you calm down, you say, she says the ravens are there, but she's worried that things could get out of hand. What about food? Consider what you want to do, knowing that any of these tasks would likely take a day. This one's pointless. Investigate the riots. When you get down to the docks, it's pandemonium. Few work on the few work on the ship now, as the ravens stand over by the people where a huge crowd roars in anger. Four of its asses are covered in blood. What happened, you shot pushing with the riders? What do you think would happen, replies Warbur, coolly. Didn't take them as didn't take them long to figure out we were building ships going to the noise and they couldn't have one. We're gonna let Henry just stand around. But alongside the ravens. You have to ask them, join the ravens and pushing people back, only using deadly force when you have to. What well, feels like days later, they finally give up and disperse. Took longer than usual, says Borfolk. Probably a while before they turn right it again. You leave feeling like you just slaughtered an army. Doesn't matter. We're all dead. We are literally all dead. Let's head to low time. But everyone sleeps, you go to the house marked on your map, which is an aged meat hall, falling apart, but otherwise not out of the ordinary. Door is closed and nobody's around. Excuse me, murmurs Oddleaf. We came all the way from Skogu and we were just wondering if you have a valuable drinking horn you didn't want anymore? Give her a grin. You never know. Announce yourselves. You give a standard greeting, batting on the door. There's no response. The door seems to be held fast on the inside. It's really a nice move. Try the door. The door is so dark, shut. Probably secure from the inside. So much for that, you say. Break down the door, ready for a fight. Not in the mood for this, you, you say, pulling your knife, hoping to get this over quickly. Throw a shoulder into the door and it cracks open. Inside a girl with grizzled men jump up with stark expressions on their face and axes in hands. Squatters who have been sleeping in the old heart scream as you attack. Fire! <laughs> Fire! Fire! Pfft. We're just slaughtering them, because humans aren't a threat. Makes you wonder how they managed to survive this long when they are such a not threat. You cannot attack me. There we go. I can't reach anybody. They have to come to me. Oh, the trap's gone. Okay. Shoot him. Four. Six. Go! <laughs> Here they come. This is... Honestly kind of pathetic. <laughs> It's just two watches and they managed to reach me, wow. I was about to say it couldn't even reach me, but one managed to do a little bit of damage to not even damage. I'm a break. <laughs> Silly humans. I don't know how I feel about this, says Oddly, as you scatter things looking for the horn. Finally, you find it tucked in the bag of one of the men just killed and Oddly starts mid sentence. Looking at the horn, it stretched out one of the most beautiful things we've ever seen, with gold inlays, intricate carvings, and an unusually wooden base. Turning primer makes you want to keep it. I'll leave notes instead. I wouldn't stop you. Ah, uh, take the horn for food. You fight the urge to simply abscond with the horn. People might die of hunger if we don't give this back, you say. Notice how they're pretending people are still alive. You guys are all by yourself. There is literally no one else here. I'll leave now, so you can tell it's half-hearted. Early the next morning, you return, to the, you return the horn to the man in the alley. That's it, the man beams as you hand it over. I thought about going back on your, my promise, he says, but I don't like to complicate things. Come to the market and we'll make sure you get a fair price on what you need. Do you know how many people we lost because of you? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's because there's nobody left it but us. But... Then there's nobody left but us. Do I even really need food? 
This question I've been wondering here. Do I really need food if we're the only ones here? Okay. I need you to be able to hit harder. I need you to be able to do that. And you do that. There we go. Cool. Okay. Oddleaf. And finally... You're not holding it. What are you holding, Oddleaf? That's two strength. What about... That's one strength with knockback. That's less weapon we are now. She's at 13. She's at 12. That's two armor per turn. Give that to someone with a lot of armor. Um... What are you holding? Plus two move, negative one aggro. Give that, let's give that to her. Oh, yeah, I can't. Shoot. Um, not holding anything. Plus two strength, plus one strength resistance. Plus two strength. There. Now all my odds are pretty strong. Um, strength, strength. Plus two armor per turn. Neither of them expect to be hit very much. That's not very, there's not much point in that. Plus armor per turn. Give that to either, actually. Plus two move, negative one I aggro. Not freaking strength, strength plus one. I like those. I like those. I like them. Okay. Are we good? I think we're good. Just because I can. By 32 supplies. This morning, says Ivor. I saw him. Bella was here. It won't be long now. Ivan leaned slightly on the staff nearby. One of your clan. They are dead! One of your clansmen comes to you out of breath. Look, he says. Things are real bad. Look, there's nothing you can do at this point, but, but, point. but a lot of the caravans have been robbed, killed, just disappeared. Those of us left are gonna split up and hide where we can. I want you to know, in case we somehow pour through this. He runs off, clearly distressed. You grimace. Wonder if this could have played out another way. All I can do now is sleep. Everybody's dead. They all ran away. But I don't think I could have played out a different way, because we were starving. With everything going on, then again, by the time I got the food, there was no point in having food. So... I did it wrong. With everything going on, you find yourself completely exhausted. You go off on your own and try to find a place to get some sleep. You slumber poorly, waking several times in a panic. Eventually, you give up, only slightly more alert. Okay, cool. Um, talk to Ivor. Ivor, you begin. Can we really keep this up? Ivor looks like he hasn't slept for days. We've lost a lot of fighters in Mumbles. The weight of the situation is crushing. Then, from far in the distance, you hear a horn. Dreads don't use horns, it occurs to you. Ivan appears at your side. Just as a long haven of people comes into view, Dredge turning to attack them. Who is that, you ask? It can't be, said Ivan. He runs toward the gate, shouting, You see their banner? It's Hagon! Hagon! I love Hagon! I miss Hagon! So many Dredge everywhere, all over the place. See all these Dredge? And these Dredge? This little city? We spent most of our time here. It can't be, said Ivan. Okay. As you wonder how they got here, the gates are heavily open and you charge in the field, clearing a path to your Dredge. Yes! Ready for battle. Hey Khan, my man. Hey Khan's not here yet. All right, guys. Can't do anything. That works first. Go there. Fire. Go. Really? Well, I'll put that there. That one's tender. Heh. <laughs> okay, move forward. And turn. And this one, sir. Uh, move forward to this side. And turn. Ow. The wait, she's typically... Huh? Who got hurt? No, so someone getting hurt. Go there. Ha. Okay. Take away his defense. Go. Uh oh, he's here. Ooh. Okay. 
Do 10 damage to him. Wow. Oh, that is strong. There. You're going to do 5. Biggest threat is right here. No, no, no. No. Undo. Flare them. He's scared. You can kill this one. Finish him off. Hakon's coming. And you won't get in his way. You will not get in Hakon's way. I want you to kill him. Him. Fire. No! I did that wrong. He's not a, he's not a threat. Move this way. This way. Fire. Oh, that's the guy just summoned. Okay. Funny that he thinks that will actually do some good for him. Boink! Finish him off. That actually went very well. I didn't lose a single person. My renown has grown. Nine renown. Oh yeah. And Juno's with Hakon? What? Juno. I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again, Die with end. She smiles and they embrace. Ivan is completely taken aback so he doesn't dare believe she's real. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it to Sugar Home. I ran into problems. Problems is putting it lightly. There's a mile wide canyon practically splitting the world in two over those hills. Couldn't find a place to cross. Worse, threats are practically falling out of it like blood from a wound. They're not coming from the north anymore, they're everywhere. We noticed. Glad to see you made out alive, Yung Gavar. I take it the others didn't. He kind of becomes silent and motions to Juno. She got across somehow. Found her out court for, for a second time since leaving Strand. We need every axe we can get right now. Bellower is here. God to be darned, I thought I was free of that menace. I will deal with the Bellower. Come on. No need to tempt him standing out here. Hey guys. Everyone dead. Hakon's caravan enters the city, fighting off waves of dreads as they go. To your relief, hundreds of skilled warriors are now safely in Boy's Guard. Everyone's no longer dead. Hakon joins you with his personal bodyguard, Mogul. Behind him, the Prince Luden and his entourage are in tow. They're looking less than pleased to be here. I have one last tip to make. I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing to you. I'm sorry, Ivan. You must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. Takes everything with an Ivan power to hold back, but he does. He turns to you. Look, come with me. We'll return in two days. Maybe less if you're as quick as you look. Tell anyone who needs to know. Well, why? Not far, says Juno. She pauses and something shifts in your vision, just for a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling with your head. And you've already been through a lot. As she speaks again, the rest of the world melts away. But you need it. You can't find the words to argue. Where are we going? And what's with all these creepy people lined up as if we're walking to a cemetery? Or an execution? You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are, walking through unfamiliar ground behind Juno. You're, all, you're alone, aside from hundreds of dreads who are all facing towards an enormous stone ahead. The hairs in the back of your head stand up. Is there all dreads? They're dressed like monks, almost. Like they're worshipping something, or someone. See, I mean, even- look at the one with the giant sword! What is that all about? It's holding it up. Like, a evil Statue of Liberty. And that one's totally dressed like a monk. Or a priest. 
We had the guards and the slobs. You glanced around nervously, but the dreads didn't seem to hear you. It's okay, you can speak. Softly. Is this where you're going to sacrifice me? Juno smiles, but could have come across as profoundly creepy looks sincere instead. No, the dreads cannot see us. We are invisible. To be more precise, they can see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. I can understand your apprehension, though. Uh, why are we surrounded by dreads? They seem to be drawn to the Godstone. There are many things we don't know about slobs. Maybe they seem as pa a patron. Or it is an attraction they cannot explain. Does slobs have something to do with the serpent and iron, iron toft? What was that thing? I cannot say. Can't? I have my suspicions, but until I've had time in the mental libraries, it would be unwise to speculate. For all our knowledge, it always seems as though we know little. Imagine how the rest of us feel. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they tend to be. Who are you? I wish we'd had time for a proper introduction. My name is Juno. I'm on the Mender Council. You've met Ivan, my apprentice. How are you doing these things? Controlling minds? I thought Menders built things and healed wounds. You are right. Menders do these things. Some of us still practice the teachings given to the Loom Mother's first creations. We are called Valka. I believe I'm the only one who something or others. Then why not take control of Bellower? I learned to turn the hero minds, not control them. Though even some Valka have trouble believing this. Taking control of Bellower, it is the difference between convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear to stop being hungry. Tuesdays, we're really a mass percent the thunder anymore. Our advantage is we can train more Valka. It is also our weakness. The Valka pass on and lose their knowledge. Well, the sun, <coughs> well, the sun is simply go older and more powerful. Bellower is both immortal and beyond my influence, to a point. Then, how do we stop him? The God of Secrets will play a part, as will you. What are we doing out here? Do you know if the God starves? Yeah, you just talked about him. He's right over to the left. Do you know the sun exists, even among those who have lived their whole lives in Bell's book, God? Well, Denglar deals in fortune starves taught men the value of trade in a different way. It shows them as consequences, two sides of the same coin. See the silver in the stone? The girls appear ways away the stone, but the metal remains. We need a piece of the silver. God starves is wreathed by an imagery of silver weapons. The myth say he traded those weapons to the gods, and they used them to kill each other. Those who seek out the stone call the god of trade. The men who call the god of secrets, he was both. But why did you pick me? Why didn't you take Ivan or Hakon? You don't even know me. I apologize for putting you in danger. Ivan must keep boys from falling while we are away. If something goes wrong here, I need to be certain one of us makes it back alive. I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived in Borsgard. You were the only one I knew would return. What do you mean? You would find your way back to Alette no matter what. Okay, uh, let's get what we need and go. Indeed, you will need to dislodge at least a fistful of the metal. We will force it into an arrow to slay Bellower. Wait, after everything you've taught me, make a magic arrow shoot Bellower? That's all it takes. Why didn't you do that a long time ago? Juno gets a faraway look in her eyes. No, that's not all it takes. What I tell you now must not be repeated. The arrow will not kill Bellower. Even were it to strike his heart, he has no physical weaknesses. But it will sow doubt in his mind. When it pierces him, I will help him to believe that he is dying. The rest of you will convince him of it with sword and axe. Everyone who fights at your side must believe it to be true. Are you going to trick him into thinking he's dead? That is the most insane... He really can't be killed. No. Someday he will awaken and realize he's not dead. I imagine he will be quite upset. <laughs> <laughs> First, we must make the arrow. Focus on the task at hand. He looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. Look, I'm not certain how the dreads will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop. So be careful. Uh... You brought me to my death. That's what I think. That's what I think. I think I'm gonna die here. It's gonna be all your fault. But but at least it's a pretty look of the ocean. Approaching the back of the stone, you start to climb, looking for at least piece of the silver vein. Even without looking out, out onto the dirt, you can feel each sense of face watching you closely, held back only by Zero's influence. Panic races through your blood. Climb higher or it will be easier to remove. As you climb, you can't help but notice the stony mass of dirt lined up before the godstone like whispered before an idol. Just a glimpse nearly immobilizes you. Your hand rests on a piece of silver that comes away easily. The dreads do not react. Look for another piece. While you're here, you glance quickly around to see if there's any more low-hanging fruit. You're able to pry away another, smaller piece of silver orb before your nerves give out. 
You nimbly descend to find to where Juno is waiting. Well done, she says, as you walk back through the dreads, the heads turn in unison to follow. The dread that lingers and the shaking in your hands does not subside for hours. Oh, but I trusted her and ended up being rewarded for it. You approach the gates of Bullshot again, you leave that they're still standing. It looks like they took a beating while you were gone. Alette rushes to your side and throws her arms around you once you've crept to the gates. Juno smiles at the reunion and tells you, Take this time with your daughter. Find the smith who can fashion an arrow from that silver. I have other things to which I must attend, but meet me on the gates when you are done. Rafters. Oops. It takes a while, but you finally find someone willing to craft an arrow for you. He eyes you suspiciously when you show him the silver, but shakes his head and gets started. I let watches. The smith's fire reflected in the distance there. I talked with Ivan the long time while you were gone. He told me a lot about Juno. Is she really as powerful as he said? Oh yeah. Maybe too powerful. As long as she's on our side. Dad, I think I know what's going to happen now. An arrow? She's going to make you feel better, isn't she? I don't know for sure. Come on, who else is going to do it? Ivor? Alette, I know where this is going. You're afraid of me dying. This isn't like before. We can't run this time. That's not what I... Let me do it. That's not an option. What do you, what do, you do when Bellower comes here for the person holding the only thing that can destroy him? Let me speak. Everything's changed. So good for so long ago. I'm not asking because I'm afraid of losing you. I'm not... I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Well, that's the problem. Let me do it because you know I'm a better shot. I have a better chance of punching his armor. We only have one shot. I'm not a child anymore. I'm your daughter. I can do this. For once, let me decide what happens to me. Let... <sighs> you and I are the last people of our village. In fact, we're the last people of practically anything. Our caravan is dead. Our people are starved. The guy you were supposed to marry is... told because I was an idiot. People starved here while I tried to find food for them. The giant was cut down because I didn't give him help. It seems like every time I try to do something, I mess up. So just for once, I'll give you a chance. He smiles and takes your hand in hers. We'll survive this. I know we will. You sit, you sit by her side silently until the smith finishes his work. We're out of time. Akon. Bursi. Griss. Mocha. Ludin and Yus. This is my original team. Team Zion need not be maxed. Yusa is maxed. Marco is not maxed. Wait. Tell me that 14 is need to be maxed. That means I need to be Ludin. He's ready. Bring Griss. Mogul's ready to be upgraded. Yus is ready to be upgraded. Ivor is upgraded. Ned. I don't need to use as many people. At the same time, if they throw my guys away, it's best to have a number of potential replacements. So. Go to her. There he is! Juno is in the middle of an animated debate as you approach. The arrow in your hand. There is little time left. Bellowin knows we're here. Whether he's waiting for more of his boys to arrive or simply wants to starve us out first, I cannot tell. But he will not expect a direct attack. Is this a joke? How are we going to do that? I will take a handful of warriors to face him. I can keep a small group hidden from sight. The rest of you will lead the charge from here. With luck, Bellowin will send his armies away from himself to meet you. What about the ravens? They, mu they may protest. They will not. I have arranged a task for them. Even if you make the belly what chances are there of you beating him? We saw what happened at Iron Tart. That thing can't be killed. Juno shows him the area where forced from Godstone Sofa. On second thought, let's stop right here for the day. Subscribe. Leave a comment. Because your words mean so much to me. And as always, guys, have an awesome day. Ta-ta!